draw professional looking signaling cascades, it is important that all your text and arrows are aligned properly. So if you look along here, the arrows are not aligned, the text not aligned. So we're going to use a, the tools in Adobe Illustrator to align this text properly. So first we're going to highlight, the, highlight these arrows and the text and we're going to go up to the top and click on horizontal align center. The other thing is if you look at these arrows they're not quite uh, evenly distributed with between the words so if you look at this arrow between SOS and GRB2 it's closer to SOS than it is GRB2 so we're going to use the uh, vertical distribute center to distribute all of the text but if you notice oh my gosh that it didn't quite work like it was supposed to and that's because I have this I, the background object selected so it's distributed everything properly it is also distributed with this background object and we don't want to do that so I'm gonna undo what I just did and then I'm gonna uh, unselect this background object by holding the shift key so I have all the objects selected but I want to hold the shift key and click on that back object so that it no longer selects it so now I only have the arrows and the text selected. Now I want to try this uh, vertical distribute center. So it's right here and now it worked perfectly. So the arrows are evenly distributed between the text and that's perfect. So now I want to go along this, uh, I'm going to correct the alignment on, along this horizontal here. So I'm going to click on this, click on along here, so I'm going to click all these texts. I want this to be perfectly aligned. And so I'm going to go up here and click on Vertical Align Center. So now they are centered. Now I want to evenly distribute them as well. So I'm going to go over to the Horizontal Distribute Center. And notice how it didn't make it look as great. The And that's because these objects are different sizes along the horizontal. So it properly aligned or distributed these objects at even increments but because some objects are larger than the others it just doesn't look right so we're gonna control Z and undo, undo what I just did and we're gonna use another function that's that you can see when you click on the alignment window so you should click on this button over here on the right and a window should pop up like this now if you don't see this alignment button over here you'll have to go up to windows and click on a line and it's going to pop up a window here you're going to take that window you're going to drag it and drop it in this menu over here it's a pretty handy menu to have one click away so you definitely want to keep it over here on the side so I'm going to click over here and you look down at the bottom and you see distribute spacing now right now we won't, we're not able to edit it and that's that's because of one little thing the in order to use the distribute spacing it needs a um, an anchor object to space it from so in other words so I have all these uh, these objects selected but it doesn't know which object I want to space out with respect to so I have to click again on this RAS because that's I want I want the RAS to stay stationary and I want everything else to move now notice down here that it uh, it allow it now allows me to move things around. So I'm going to try different different numbers. I'm going to try point one, and then I'm going to click the the horizontal distribute, and then that looks a little too wide. Um, so let's try 0 0.05. And then I'm going to click on that. Okay, now that looks really nice. So what it does is it adds a space between the objects, and that space is 0. 0.5 inches. One thing that's really important when drawing molecular cascades is you want all your text to be center aligned. And what I mean by that is whenever you click on this this text and you look up to the top in the paragraph alignment, you want it to be aligned center. Now that's not true for all text objects whenever you when you know in all documents but in this case you, you you're more often than not you're going to want it to be center aligned and let me explain why that is so let's say I, I draw this beautiful pathway I think it looks great and then I decide you know maybe I don't want this MEK 
be labeled this way. Maybe I want it to be map kinase kinase. Now look what happened. And now my text that was perfectly aligned is no longer aligned. And so then I'll have to re-click on this and then I'll have to align it. And then and then if I decide, ah oh, man, I, I don't I actually wanted MAK M -E back. And so, you know, now I have to realign things. It just causes a lot of work. Uh, it seems silly, but if you have to change hundreds, hundreds of these, it, it really gets annoying. So that's why you really want to make this center aligned. And it's going to be annoying at first because whenever you do that, it moves the object, and then you're going to have to realign. You're going to say, oh, well, I wish I didn't do that. Um, and so to, to realign it, I will click on this, hold shift, click on this, and then I'm going to click again. That's going to set this as a reference point. And then I'm going to click horizontal line center. Now look what happens. Now if I now that I've aligned it properly, now I can say map kinase kinase and it keeps it perfectly aligned. And so that saves a lot of time uh, in the long run. You really want to avoid overlapping lines like this. And so now I'm going to correct this so that it looks a little better and more easy to see. Okay, so you can see that it's uh, a lot more easy to follow the pathways um, now that the lines are not overlapping nearly as much. It's also important to delete any unnecessary components of the pathway. For instance, maybe in this publication you really want them to focus on the um, this pathway along the this vertical line and maybe a little bit along the G G protein coupled receptor, but maybe it's not so important in this publication that they know about the KM kinase pathway. So I would recommend, in that case, to complete just to remove it altogether and uh, delete it. That way they can really focus on the important components. Now you can also, if you really feel like you must have this include this information just for the sake of completeness. Um, you may want to consider making a little more transparent. So, this is, so for example, I've highlighted these objects. I can go over here to Appearance, then click on Opacity, and then I can make this, say, 40. Um, and that grays it out a little bit. I would tend to not like this because if you are making it less visible, then you really don't want them to see it. And so why include it? anyways but it you know it, it, it this could be a, a compromise along that direction so um, I recommend deleting it altogether but if you want to keep it um, graying out these uh, c c unnecessary components is also a viable option in a pathway where you have a, an unavoidable crossing of two arrows, um, you really want to highlight that one is overpassing the other. Um, and it just really helps the eye follow the pathway. So in order to do that, uh, you'll create a line just oh, right on top of that arrow. And then you're going to um, change it to white. And then you're going to increase the thickness, I don't know, about four. And then you're going to bring it to the background, but over, still overlaying uh, the underlying arrow. So to do that, I'm going to hold the control key and then press the left facing back bracket. So the bracket that's uh, on the left key. And I'm clicking it, and you'll see that it goes just below. So you notice that now it's, it's below the arrow but above the top arrow and then so above the bottom arrow. Um, yeah. Another way you might be able to do that is to click on that object, hold the shift key, click on the back arrow, and then right click and say go down to range and go and click on send to the back. And so now uh, 
now it it makes it more apparent that one arrow's going over the other and it's just a lot easier to follow now an alternative to that and, and now if you want to select like say you decide that um, this underlying white is, is not so clear you can uh, and or maybe you want to make it wider so you can highlight use the marquee select so click so just use the regular select tool but click and hold on the left mouse button and drag so you see those dotted lines so that you select both objects okay then hold the shift key and click again and now you've selected the underlying object so now if I increase the size um, you can see I'm only modifying the bottom line that was drawn and not the top arrow okay so let's try another option let's um, another way of uh, making this overlaying arrow more apparent is to make it kind of hop over this uh, the bottom arrow. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in by holding the Alt key and run the spinning the mouse wheel, and then I'm going to add some anchor points right here. Oh, hold on. Let me select on the object first, then click on the pen tool. So I add an anchor there. I'm going to click again with my left mouse button to add an anchor here. Then I'm going to use the direct selection tool. Click back on the first anchor point. Change this to a curve. So now I'm going to... Uh, so now you see that it has an anchor point and then a handle here. I'm going to hold the Alt key and then click on that handle and move it up. Now you could just do that number and that does a hop over. So now you can see it's just much more clear that it's one arrow is hopping over the other. I think both methods, uh, you know, using an underlaying white line or doing the hop over, both methods uh, convey the same information and, and look nice in my opinion. When you're drawing a complicated pathway like shown here, it is important to orient the reader to where you really want them to be focused on. So for instance, I have, I'm oriented, giving them a spatial orientation with a membrane uh, represented for the receptors so that these receptors are located inside the membrane. I'm also uh, highlighted a canonical pathway um, shown here with a rect you know kind of a orange rectangle on the back and the back you can also so just to give you an idea of what this would look like without it uh, i can move them away and if i was a reader i really wouldn't know where i should be uh, start looking at this pathway should i start looking at cam kinase or should i you know phospholipase c or map kinase it's not really clear where i should start um, but if I put this back, you can you can see that it's very clear. I should start with the receptors on top and look at the flow of information going downwards. You can also color um, the different objects. That's also good. You know, if I were to click on the the text along this pathway, I can change this to red, um, and then also color the arrows as well. And you know that might also look nice so it really depends on you know what how you want it to look um, I kind of prefer uh, what was done before but this works as well as long as you orient the the reader to know where they should be looking so it's very important to give a strong contrast between the text and the underlying object so the author may want to highlight KM kinase 2 in this instance so they may color the the uh, the text you know red and then they may want to circle behind it signifying a protein so they bring this over here and and you can see that they really didn't do any favors for themselves um, you can barely read the text inside there um, so one way of doing that is uh, to uh, highlight both. One way to pick uh, the appropriate colors is to highlight both objects. Go over here to this uh, color guide 
and then go down here to uh, edit or apply colors and then go over here to and then you can reset it so reset button so that it returns it back to its original coloring and then go over to edit and now you get a kind of a graphical representation of the distance between these two colors and you can see that the distance is really close so they're going to be very difficult to distinguish between each other so let's let's try to help this out a little bit by by bringing this inward and you can see that it looks way better right now I mean it, it's much easier to distinguish and this is just a nice tool to really uh, get down the color scheme of a specific piece of art and so you can drag this around and choose which color you really want um, just keep in mind that the distance between these two uh, dots is important. Mm -hmm.